Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Stevens. I am one of the tutors at Med School Tutors in Blueprint Test Prep. And I'm thrilled to be joining you to discuss some changes that are coming to the Comprehensive Basic Science Exam, or the CBSC, uh, and the Comprehensive Basic Science Self-Assessments, or the CBSSAs, uh, colloquially known or, or um, generally known as the NBME exams for step one. And so just to take a step back and give you a little bit of an idea of the rationale for the changes that are coming to these practice tests, you may be aware that there's a pretty big uh, update in how uh, the step one will be scored going forward. And so beginning on January 26th, 2022, including that day and of course every subsequent day after it, instead of releasing the three digit score that they had in the past, the USMLE will only release a pass fail result on step one. And so the way that the score reports have been adapted now is that um, if you pass the exam, all you are communicated is that you passed. Um, and there's no information that is explained about how you performed relative to your peers. Um, it simply gives you an idea of how you, of, of what the question breakdown was on the exam administration that you took. Uh, if you fail the test, it does report back feedback about how to improve in the future and pass the exam at a later time. And so we'll give you an idea of how you compared against a low pass score um, and areas of opportunity to get better. And so what we're going to be talking about today as it relates to that is the score report changes for those so-called step one NBMEs, or, or as mentioned before, the CBSC and the CBSSA. And so starting in about mid-February, they're going to be also transitioning the way that they score these practice tests to reflect the changes that happened in step one. And so instead of reporting a three-digit score, as they had in the past, uh, the revised CBSC and CBSSA exams simply give you an estimated probability of passing the USMLE step one exam. And the purpose of this is it still communicates to you your readiness, but does it in a way that reflects how you are doing, how, how you need to perform on the test itself. Because there's no three-digit score that you're going to be getting back on the exam, they have comprehensive, correspondingly adapted how they score these practice tests to reflect moving towards a pass-fail system. I think just to give you an idea, and I present this data not to make you not take step one seriously or to cause concern about step one, but just to state that most people, the majority, the, the majority of people, a solid majority of people, pass step one on their first attempt. And before there might have been a stratification by passing step one by just a few points versus passing step one by 80 points. And now the reality is that there's no way to differentiate. A pass score is a pass score, regardless of whether it would have been before. A 196 or a 280. In terms of how you should approach step one in the light of that is you should definitely, um, you should definitely still want to be motivated to pass the exam. A failing score on this exam would still be communicated to um, on your score report in your subsequent applications. And that will come across as a stratification relative to people who did pass. And so even though the exam is moving towards pass fail and takes away a lot of the concern that might exist of trying to get as high a number as possible, it makes it all the more important that you pass this exam on your very first attempt. And so just to talk a little bit more about these practice tests, the CBSC and the CBSSA are, are six different exams that are published online that we call NBME 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Um, they've been updated in the last calendar year to, with a lot of exciting new changes. Um, they all provide answer explanations for every question now. Um, historically, actually, several years ago, the NBME wouldn't even let you review all of the questions from the practice tests, simply the ones that you got incorrect. But you, will now have, you now have the ability to review all of the questions. They've done a great job with updating the score reports and provide good feedback to get an idea of how you are performing in different disciplines and subject matters to better align your studying to improve in the future. Each of the practiced exams are available online for $60. And while recognizing that that fee is not insignificant, I do want to encourage everyone, if you are able to, to take as many of these practice tests as possible. First, they're great for assessing your performance. You get an idea of how you're doing 
and um, it can help guide the timeline of when you're taking the exam. It can help guide your studies to figure out if what you're doing is working and you should continue doing it, or maybe it might be worthwhile to try a different tact. It's also great to have practice with USMLE style questions. These are retired step one questions, and they have been written by the test writers, the same people who create the questions that you're going to be answering on your exam day. And so by taking as many of these as possible, you're going to develop more and more comfort with the USMLE style questions, which you know, a lot of the QBanks that are available, including UWorld, do a great job, but again, are inherently different simply because they're just not written by the same people. The reports that you're going to get on these new practice tests, again, are eliminating that three-digit score. Historically, what I would communicate to students is that I like to see at least three practice tests over 200 to feel comfortable that you are in passing range. That is going to have to adjust a little bit now because we're not going to have that number anymore. And so the new threshold that, that I would recommend is, of course, getting a percentage likelihood of passing as high as possible, but ideally definitely at least 95%, and in a perfect world, 97 or 98%. Again, because the impetus to, to pass is as strong as ever now. It's not going to be, um, you want to make sure that without the opportunity to demonstrate improvement and have a, a good score on a subsequent administration, passing on your first attempt is all the, all the more important. Um, so at least 95%, again, on multiple practice tests. These new score reports also are great. They'll continue to show how you're performing in different subject areas. And what they do is they're going to report it out relative to what a low pass would be. So if you're performing along the median for everything of what a low pass would be, then you can assume that your score would probably be, would, would in all likelihood be a pass. If you are scoring under that threshold, though, those areas, those disciplines and subjects where you're under that median are areas where you should realign your studying. You'll still also get an idea of your percentage correct, and they'll give you the percentage correct of the national cohorts of students as well. And so you can use the standard, that average and a standard deviation to get an idea of where you stand relative to other students. Uh, and so this is just an example of what that looks like. It's an excerpt taken from the sample score report that the USMLE publishes online. And again, you can see how they show how you perform in different areas relative to a low pass. Uh, the timeline of changes, again, a very important date to know is that step one is becoming pass-fail on January 26, 2022. The uh, NBME would like to provide these updated score reports by the middle of February 2022. There's no concrete date set yet. Um, the situation is continuing to evolve. This is a kind of big transition for medical education, for the medical boards, and so we kind of take things as, as time goes. Uh, and remember that the UWorld self-assessment still exist. Currently, there hasn't been any um, signaling that they were going to that the that UWorld will change how they score these self-assessments. But um, as it currently stands, you'll still likely get a three-digit score on those. If you have any questions about any of this, it can be confusing. It can be complicated. There's a lot of nuance to this now as the USMLE changes, and we just want you to know that we're here and we're happy to assist. Uh, anything and everything as it relates to developing your study plan, navigating these practice tests, and getting ready for your exam. Um, and so with that, thanks so much for participating, and, um, and feel free to reach out if you have uh, any questions or concerns.